All right, so we're back in the world of Pythagorean theorem on a new concept review. But here's what we've got. We've got the Pythagorean theorem. So you remember it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b represent what we call the legs. Then the two sides, when we put them together, they actually form that right angle. So in my little example here, a and B are these two sides here forming this right angle. C is referred to as the hypotenuse. It's the side opposite the right angle, and it's always the longest side. So from here, we get two types of examples that we can figure out an answer to. One is to find the hypotenuse. Two is to find one of the legs. So in my first example down here, I'm given my two legs, their lengths three and four. They would represent A and B, and I don't know the length of the hypotenuse. So I go back to my theorem. I plug three and four in for A and B. So I've got three four squared plus four squared equals X squared. Three times three is nine, four times four is 16. We're going to add those, take the square root, and we come up with the length of the hypotenuse would be five. If for some reason we forgot this last step, which some people do, forgot to take the square root, we should use our eyes and mind and say we could not have a 3, 4, and a 25. That's too long. Kind of a key to saying, okay, Made a mistake somewhere, oh yes, forgot this last step. I found x squared, not x, gotta take my square root. Second type of example is we know the hypotenuse in one of the legs, but we don't know the other leg. Same process. x squared plus eight squared equals 10 squared. And a square eight, eight times eight, we're going to square 10, 10 times 10. Next step, as we know, we're going to subtract 64 from each side. Again, x squared is 36. This could not be 36 because it would be longer than the hypotenuse. Got one more step. Got to take my square root. 6 times 6 is 36. So my missing side is 6. That's our basic Pythagorean theorem. Now we want to look at the converse. Uh -oh. Technical problems again, but I'll work through them. Ignore this over here for a minute. Now we use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to figure out if they give us the lengths of the three sides, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out whether we have a right triangle, an acute triangle, or an obtuse triangle. If they give us the three sides and they come out equal when we apply the Pythagorean theorem, then we have a right triangle. If we add the two legs after squaring them and it comes out larger than the hypotenuse, we have an acute triangle. If we add them and it's less than the hypotenuse squared, then it's obtuse. So here's my three examples. If I had five, 12, and 13 as the sides, when I square five and 12, add them together, I get the same thing as square and 13. This tells me I have a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem worked. They came out equal. Example two, six, eight, and 11. If I apply the Pythagorean theorem, I add this side, I get 100. I add square this side, I get 121. Since the square sum of the squares of the legs is smaller or less than the square of the hypotenuse, then I look up here, 
I have an obtuse triangle. Example three, seven, eight, and 10. When I use the same process, this time when I square and sum the legs, I get a number greater than the square of the hypotenuse. Up here, it tells me that I have an acute triangle. Now, let's see if I can do a better job managing the screen here. I can't, so, sorry, I'll get better at this next time. I'm going to do my special right triangle. I'm only going to do one of them today. And it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. As you remember, the three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. Mm -hmm. So if one of them is 45, the other one is 45 if it's a right triangle, because we know a right angle is 90 degrees. These types of triangles are also known as isosceles right triangle. Remember from last section that isosceles means two sides are congruent, have the same length. It also means two angles are the same side. And if it's isosceles and right, that results in two 45 degree angles and a 90 degree angle. So if I know one of the legs, I know the other leg because they're both the same because it's isosceles. The special relationship that works for the hypotenuse in these types of triangles is that if I know the length of a leg, I take that and multiply it by the square root of two to get the length of the hypotenuse. So in my example, I've got this triangle ABC where B is a right angle. I know AC is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And I'm given that AB is three. These slashes tell me that it's an isosceles triangle. So these angles would both be 45. And if AB is 3, then BC is also 3. And up here, if I look again, the length of the hypotenuse can be found by taking the length of a leg and multiplying it by the square root of 2. So the length of AC would be 3 times square root of 2. What if they gave me the hypotenuse? They just work backwards. Up here, I know that if the legs were three, this is three, this is three, then the hypotenuse is three root two. So if they gave me the hypotenuse is five root two, then I know each of the legs would just be the five. Pretty straightforward. That's it. Any questions? Antonio, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. I'm going to post that recording, hopefully. Mr. Kennedy, any questions? Are you good too? Mr. I'm feeling Kennedy? very festive here with the lights and stuff here. <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good. All right. Thanks for joining. Yeah. All right. See you later. Bye. If you have questions, Antonio, you know what to do. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what to do. Yep. Awesome.